Welcome again. Right now we are at Luke chapter 23, verses 13 through 25. A very important, a very crucial passage here. Okay, we just got done reading a few passages of Scripture where Jesus was brought before Pilate. And uh, Pilate asked him a few questions and then sent him off to Herod. Well, Herod humiliated him and, and mocked him and, and a- tried to ask him a lot of questions and Jesus wouldn't answer him. So Herod sent him back to Pilate. And this is where we pick up. Verse 13, Pilate called together the chief priests, the rulers, and the people, and said to them, You brought this man to me as one that perverts the people. And behold, having examined him before you, I found no basis for a charge against this man concerning those things of which you accuse him. Neither has Herod, for I sent you to him, and see, nothing worthy of death has been done by him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. Now he had to release one prisoner to them from the feast. This would be the feast of Passover. Now the NU, the NU manuscripts here in the notes, it says that omits verse 17. So some manuscripts omit verse 17. That means that it's possible that verse 17 wasn't really in the original. Let's read on. Verse 18. But they all cried out together, saying, Away with this man! Release to us Barabbas! The one who was thrown into prison for a certain revolt in the city and for murder. Then Pilate spoke to them again, wanting to release Jesus. But they shouted, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! Why were these people so angry with Jesus? Why were they so angry with Jesus? If Jesus was this lovey-dovey, kissy, you know, oh, I just want to bless you. Oh, I just want everybody to feel my peace. Oh, I just want everybody to feel my loving arms around you. If he was this kind of man, why would they want him to be crucified? Why would the whole multitude want Jesus to be crucified? If Jesus was such a lovable kind of guy, why were there so many people I mean, it seems like everybody, almost everybody, uh, wanting him to be crucified. You, you, you'd think that at least there might have been some kind of a riot that breaks out between two groups of people. You know, half the people want to save Jesus, half the people want him crucified. But no, it seems like almost everybody wanted him crucified. Why were they so angry with him? Why were they just, why did they hate him so much? Well, you see the answer we have in the book of John. We're going, to re- we're going to get to the book of John very soon, by the way. And stick in there. Don't forget to subscribe. I always check back for new teachings. But in the book of John, Jesus makes it very clear. He said that the world hates him. Get that for a minute. Think about that for a minute. Jesus, the Jesus, the true Jesus, the real Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible, said the world hates him. Why would the world hate him? He said it. He said, the world hates me because I testify that its deeds are evil. Listen, preacher, if you are preaching like Jesus, if you are preaching the message of Jesus, you better be preaching that the world, that the whole world is full of sin and evil. I mean, define sin. 1 John 3, 3, 4, you know, sin is the transgression of God's law. What's God's law? We have it in, the, in our Bibles. Whatever is against anything in, in the Bible is sin. Whatever is against any commandment is sin. Define sin, preacher. Identify it, preacher. Point it out. Expose it. And, what should I say? Exterminate it, okay? Exterminate sin from your churches, preachers. Exterminate sin from your churches. You're going to be hated. <laughs> it's just the way it is. That Jesus was hated. A lot of people believe in a Jesus that was a kind of Jesus that was so loving and so, you know, so understanding and so gracious that Jesus, oh, the grace of God, oh, the love of Jesus, oh, that Jesus' arms would be wrapped around you. That's not what we read in the Bible. You might as well just be preaching about Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny. That's not the Jesus of the Bible. These people 
were angry. These people were angry with Jesus because Jesus rebuked them time and time and time again. We read about it. We got lots of evidence about this where they tried to, uh, you know, arrest him before. They tried to throw him off a cliff. They tried to, you know, uh, kill him time and time again. Why? Because Jesus touched a nerve. Jesus preached against their sin, their pride, their lust. They hated him. They hated him. Finally, they got their chance when he was arrested and before Pilate and crucify him. Okay? Think about it for a minute. Make sure you believe in the right Jesus, the real Jesus, the, the scriptural, the biblical Jesus, not what they preach in so many churches today, not what the Christian celebrities have preached and do preach today. No, don't fall for that. Jesus said, woe to you when men speak well of you. Verse 22. He said to them the third time, Pilate said, why? What evil has this man done? The reason why these people couldn't answer that question, the reason why the multitudes could not answer that question, because Jesus didn't do any evil. Why were they so angry with him? Because Jesus exposed their evil, called them hypocrites, called them brood of vipers, called them whitewashed tombs, called them sons of Satan, called them dogs and fox. I mean, all kinds of stuff. Preacher, do you preach like Jesus? If you call yourself a Christian, if you, if you call yourself a follower of Jesus, you should. Let's read on. Once again, I'm going to read verse 22. Uh, Pilate said to them the third time, why? What evil has this man done? They knew that, that Jesus didn't do any evil, that they did the evil, but Jesus was just rebuking them for it. Pilate said, I found no capital crime in him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. But they were urgent with loud voices, asking that he might be crucified. Their voices and the voices of the chief priests prevailed. And this is a good point, okay? Why was Jesus crucified? The voices of the people and the voices of the chief priests. The church in society needs not to stand up for sin against those who preach against sin. The churches, the preachers, the church boards, whoever is in charge of these churches should be standing with Jesus. The chief priest should be standing with Jesus. The chief priest should be standing against sin, against hypocrisy. Not against the one who rebukes sin and hypocrisy, not against the one who comes against the sin that they so love. I emphasize love. Listen, true love is God's love. And God hates sin. Yes, God is love. But God is also holy. He is also just. He hates sin. It says he is a consuming fire. You know, yeah, it says God is love. But God, it also says God is a consuming fire. Ask Nadab and Abihu. They were consumed by the fire of God, by the fire of God's wrath. Think about it for a minute. Think about it. So you, leaders in the church, yeah, you have a lot of influence in society. If society is going the way of garbage and trash, it's because of the voices that they hear, your voices, the voices of the chief priests. So be very careful to stand up for righteousness, stand against sin, and preach righteousness. Preach against sin. Let's read on. Verse 24. Pilate decreed that what they asked for should be done. He was just tired of these people, so adamant that Jesus was a criminal, that he should be put to death. And it seemed like everybody was against Pilate and Jesus. So uh, Pilate caved in. 
don't cave in, okay? When you're the only one and it seems like everybody's screaming and yelling uh, for you to do something that you know is wrong, don't do it. When you're the only, it seems like you're the only one, don't cave in. Get some backbone. Don't cave in to the crowd. Don't cave in to those around you. Family, friends, co-workers, whoever, or just strangers, some of you, cave into the wishes and wills and whims of strangers. Get some backbone. Stand up for what's right. Stand up. Verse 25. He released him who had been thrown into prison for insurrection and for murder, for whom they asked, but he delivered Jesus up to their will. So here we got Jesus being crucified and murderer, a murderer going free. Today in society, in many developed nations around the world, we've got many murderers going free. There is a lot of murder going on in the name of health and health care. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. And the good people, the ones that stand up for righteousness, they're the ones that are crucified. You know what I'm talking about. But all in all, have some backbone. Stand up for what's right. Stand up, stand strong, even when it seems like everybody else is against you. Stand strong. Pilate could have stood up against the crowd. Pilate gave in to him. Pilate could have stood with Jesus. Listen, you know, we have, uh, there's another historical, there's another document that I'm going to get into later that talks about how Pilate was so um, distressed about his decision later in life that he basically drove himself mad thinking about this that he was somehow responsible or somehow had something to do with the crucifixion of the Son of God. Listen, stand strong against the world. Even if it's just you and Jesus, stand strong, stand strong. And you will be blessed in the end. Oh, you know what? It won't be easy. No, it won't be easy. You're going to be derided. You are... you're going, to be reviled. You're going to be reviled. You're going to be mocked. There's going to be pressure on you. But in the end, you're going to be rewarded. The reward will be great. Do not, do not faint. Do not faint. As you stand strong, may God grant you boldness and words to say when you need to say them. Give, give you wisdom to say what should be said. And to be quiet when you should be when you should be quiet. And by all means, stick with God. Stand strong with God. Stand strong with righteousness and what's right. In the name of Yeshua, Hamashir, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.